claimed you died twice. You didn't. You claimed no, you had two I cardiac didn't. arrests. You didn't. That, that's not melodramatic. That's straight out lying. It is. Extraordinary lies. And if you lie about that and you go to those extraordinary lengths to mm -hmm. create the story around that lie, mm -hmm. how can we believe anything you say now? Tara, I have lost everything. Annabelle Natalie Gibson, a.k.a. Belle Gibson, was a wellness guru who duped the world with her fake story about terminal brain cancer. The high school dropout with a mysterious background and camera-ready face even managed to fool the wealthiest company in the world with nothing more than a sad story. But even more alarming, the damage she caused the very community she claimed to be fighting for. She fooled the hundreds of thousands who bought her app, read her blog, and believed that her story could be their story. Belle Gibson was living a dream. She was also living an elaborate lie. And it wouldn't be long until this dream would shatter, and it would all start with an act of charity. For a person living with brain cancer, might I add, you look incredibly healthy. For lack of a better phrase, Belle Gibson is a blank canvas. During the height of her fame, she was adored by millions, paraded as a hero, and idolized for her strength, courage, and resilience. But as much as we know about the one-time influencer, in truth, we know very little, because Belle Gibson was capable of being whoever you needed her to be at any given moment. Fraud was her paintbrush, and she wielded it to create stories that were nothing short of a masterpiece. Do you know what the definition of truth is? Yes. What's your definition of truth? That uh, speaking with honesty and... Um... To tell the story of the rapid rise and tumultuous fall of Belle Gibson, we first must start at the beginning because even that is shrouded in a veil of mystery. For years, facts about Gibson remained so elusive that a simple question of her age could bring a flurry of responses instead of what should have been a simple reply. You're 23, right? Well, actually, how old are you? Um, I've always been raised um, as being currently a 26-year-old. Belle Gibson was born in Tasmania on October 8, 1991. We know this because in 2015, the editor of Women's Weekly obtained Gibson's legal birth certificate from her mother. However, corporate filings related to her business contracts indicate Belle is three years younger than she publicly claims to be. How old are you? Well, I live knowing, as I've always known, that I would be 26. Okay, Belle. Um, I've... This is a really, really simple question. How old are you? I believe that I'm 26. And I have two birth, two birth certificates and I've had my name changed four times. Bell claims that from the ages of 5 to 12, she was in charge of running the family household as her mother lay disabled with multiple sclerosis, a claim that was later proven false. Gibson attended high school in, until 10th grade when she dropped out at the age of 16. In late 2008, Belle became heavily involved in the online skateboarding community. But 17-year-old Belle wasn't there to discuss nollies, flip kicks, and grinds. No. She was there to share the health issues that had plagued her since she was a child. In one heart-wrenching post, Belle shared a health struggle that left the group heartbroken as she detailed not one, but three recent admissions to the hospital for life-saving procedures. The often ill Gibson found solace in a group of strangers who took her in and acted as virtual shoulders to cry on. At the time, Belle was living in Perth and was a frequent contributor to an online skateboarding forum. But instead of chatting about skateboarding, Belle was telling her friends an elaborate fairy tale, supposedly from her hospital bed, in not one, but three admissions for life-saving heart surgery. In 2009 alone, Bell had three heart operations, two cardiac arrests, 
died twice on the operating table, a stroke, and finally, she was diagnosed with an inoperable brain tumor. Belle Gibson was given the grim news she had just four months to live. I mean, you go into extraordinary details. I had surgery about seven hours ago. The doctor comes in and tells me the draining failed and I went into cardiac arrest and died for just under three minutes. I had the most intense bruising from the paddles when they electrocuted me back to consciousness. Mm -hmm. Minus the wires and constant throwing up of blood. Anyway, the procedure failed and I died. Perhaps through divine intervention, or maybe through the thoughts and prayers of her friends, but Belle would overcome her heart conditions and outlive her previously grim prognosis. 2009 would finally bring some good news to Belle's life, when in fall of that year, 17-year-old Belle Gibson found herself pregnant. She would go on to give birth to her first and only child in July 2010. Things seemed to be looking up for Belle, but bad news had a habit of reappearing in her short life. I have cancer in my blood, spleen, brain, uterus and liver. I am hurting. I can still see it so clearly in my mind, that post and that caption, because I just remember feeling so devastated for her, like how can this happen? Just a few years later, the brain cancer would return and Belle would learn she had just months to live. She blogged her journey of radiotherapy and chemotherapy treatments, but after eight weeks of declining health, Belle took things into her own hands, shunning Western medicine in favor of her own path to natural healing. She cut gluten and dairy and turned to oxygen therapy, alternative treatments, and a whole food diet of avocados, berries, no alcohol, and so on. Against all odds, Belle made it. She took her own well-being into her hands, and it worked, and she transformed her life from it. The spunky survivor with the never say quit attitude not only survived, she thrived. When Belle documented her miracle recovery on Instagram, the inspirational influencer with the sweet disposition became a celebrity. Her followers were filled with hope. After all, if Belle could make it, if Belle could shun traditional medicine and cure her own cancer, maybe they could too. And Belle wasted no time cashing in. Soon, there were millions of clicks to her blog, book deals, speaking engagements, TV appearances, and more, as Belle went from virtual unknown to media darling almost overnight. Elle magazine named her the most inspiring woman you've met this year. Cosmo awarded her a Fun Fearless Female Award, and Penguin Press published her cookbook. The Gibson branded Whole Pantry app launched in 2013, filled with healthy living tips and recipes. One of her first actions was to promise a third of all proceeds from the 300,000 downloads to charity. The media applauded the charitable gesture as accolades piled up for the newly minted natural health icon. Seeing someone like Belle heal themselves through food made me feel hopeful. It made me feel like this was the answer to everything that I had been looking for. Apple pre-installed her app on the Apple Watch and even flew her to its Silicon Valley launch. The high school dropout from Tasmania was successfully scamming the richest company in the world and earning big as a result. There was nowhere to go but up and the sky was the limit for the young entrepreneur. Nobody thought to verify Belle's claims or even ask how someone with cancer could radiate such a youthful, healthy glow. Unlike in previous decades, proving an illness these days doesn't require head shaving, eyebrow plucking, a service dog, or even a feeding tube. Instead, anyone with access to Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, or the countless social media platforms can create the illusion of a terminally ill persona with the click of a button. Do you believe you have a mental illness? No. I mean, it's been suggested perhaps you have Munchausen syndrome yeah. or a factitious disorder. Do you accept that perhaps you do? I don't accept that because I don't feel that I do. Dr. Mark Feldman, professor of psychiatry at the University of Alabama, coined the term Munchausen's by internet in 2000. 
The term describes the patterns of behavior wherein those affected falsely claim illnesses in online venues. Would you accept that you're a pathological liar? No. While Bell Gibson may be the most famous example of this disorder, there are tens of thousands of Bell Gibsons out there collecting false ailments like trading cards with the focus on collecting your clout, compassion, and cash. Do you take responsibility for driving any people away from conventional medicine in seeking treatment for their cancer? That would be really heartbreaking to me because I never intended on doing that. Do you accept that that's what you might have done? I accept that might have happened. In 2013, Bell solicited charitable donations from her loyal following of 200,000 plus people in the name of five organizations. Bell has publicly claimed to have given away 25% of her company's profits and in her book wrote that a large part of everything earned was donated to various causes. Gibson also falsely claimed to be donating proceeds to charity, including a little boy with inoperable cancer. There was also that earlier promise of one third of her app proceeds to charity for the whole pantry. With over 300,000 downloads and at a cost of $3.79 per purchase, Bell was expected to hand over somewhere in the neighborhood of $341,000 USD. Several of the companies Bell raised money for were unaware that Bell was collecting donations in their name, and none of them had received a dime. The backlash was immediate. The thing that you first notice about Bell Gibson is that she just doesn't look sick at all, like she's a picture of glowing health. About halfway through the interview, I framed a question which was something along the lines of what about these other four cancers that you um, were recently diagnosed with? And she started this answer that just seemed to go around in circles and she was talking about the difficulties she was having. She was going to tell me something that she hadn't said publicly before. It was very difficult and upsetting for her. And I was just sitting there thinking, what, what is, where is this going? Like, what is she She started talking? telling me that the doctor who diagnosed her with these other four cancers uh, the previous year had shot through on her and she was no longer seeing him and she now had doubts about his bona fides. And so I said to her, well, what are you telling me? Are you saying that you're now not sure that you've got these other four cancers? And she said, no. People's immediate reaction was denial. This can't be real, surely not. And then as I think it started to sink in, that's when the doubt creeped in and people thought, okay, Maybe she actually did lie. As soon as questions arose from the media about her fundraising activities, Bell promised to pay the donations to the slighted organizations. She blamed her company's cash flow problems for the 15 month delay in payment. In 2014, Bell claimed to have given $300,000 to charity. But one year later, Bell was forced to admit these contributions were never made. Along with the Schwartz family, there have been a number of charities Bell has pledged money to which have not seen a cent. And there are disputed donations of up to $300,000. This was Bell's undoing. She promoted her promise to raise money for various charities, but when the funds failed to materialise, her deception was exposed. In March this year, the act was up and she's been trying to lie her way out of it ever since. Further doubt was cast on Gibson's story in early 2015, when former friends of the holistic guru revealed suspicions they had surrounding her credibility as far back as 2009. Gibson's real life friends would often work around the clock, rostering shifts to sleep besides her when she seemed unwell. Only later, the ailments she claimed were leaving her bedridden would suddenly vanish. In April 2015, after months of speculation and denials, Gibson admitted she never had cancer. I have been healing a severe and malignant brain cancer for the past few years with natural medicine, Gerson therapy and foods. It's working for me. It is. <laughs> and Except if any... you didn't have brain cancer. No, I didn't. No. Bell would also claim that she had suspicions her cancer diagnosis was false as far back as 2010, but in true sociopathic fashion, 
she would find someone else to blame for her years of lies and deceit. Bell claimed to have been misdiagnosed by a mysterious neurologist called Dr. Mark Johns, who allegedly carried out integrative medical tests on her, which determined she had just six weeks to live. What sort of tests? It was a box, a machine with lights on the front, and that machine was apparently German technology. There's a, two pads, two metal pads, one that goes below the chair and one that goes behind your back, and then that measures what I believe or remember to be frequencies. And what were the results? He said to me that I had a stage four brain tumour and that I had approximately four months to live. Whether Dr. Mark Johns exists or not has yet to be confirmed, but as of 2022, Bell remains unable to provide even a shred of evidence. She says in 2009, she met a man called Mark Johns, who told her he was an immunologist and neurologist, though no record of him exists. When her web of deceit finally began to unravel, Gibson quickly set about erasing all details of her unusual and contradictory claims from the internet. Her own mother spoke to the Australian press to express her embarrassment about the lies and shame Gibson had brought to the family. Melodramatic now. I mean, they, they're straight out lies. You weren't in hospital. You're claiming you were. You claimed you died twice. You didn't. You claimed no, you had two I cardiac didn't. arrests. You didn't. That, that's not melodramatic. That's straight out lying. It is. Extraordinary lies. And if you lie about that and you go to those extraordinary lengths to mm -hmm. create the story around that lie, mm -hmm. how can we believe anything you say now? Tara, I have lost everything. In September 2017, Gibson was fined 410,000 Australian dollars, or a little over $300,000 US, and found guilty of misleading and deceptive conduct by Melbourne's federal court. Surprisingly, she received no jail time, a serious blow to those who wanted to see her punished. Belle Gibson was never a cancer survivor. What she is, is a fraud. In a 2019 letter released by the federal court, Gibson claimed she was $170,000 in debt and had only $5,000 to her name. Cancer fraud Belle Gibson says she's got no money to pay $410,000 in unpaid fines for breaching consumer laws with her deceptive and misleading conduct. You believed her. You know, you thought that her story had been checked out. If she doesn't find a way to pay the fines, the young mother could be facing years behind bars. Perhaps being in jail might give her some time to reflect on what it is that she's done. As of the date of this recording in 2022, Bell has still yet to pay her fines. On January 22nd, 2020, the sheriff's office raided Gibson's home in Northcote and seized items to recoup Gibson's unpaid fines, which, due to interest and cost, now exceed half a million dollars. Half a million dollars of outstanding fines. Gibson made hundreds of thousands of dollars from a social media empire after claiming alternative therapies and nutrition cured her brain cancer. It was later revealed she never had the disease. Consumer Affairs says they will not stop until they receive all the money she owes. Bell has mostly chosen to stay out of the limelight since her very public exposure. One of her last known appearances was in February 2020. Now using the name Sabantu, the scammer formerly known as Bell appeared in a video claiming to be adopted by Melbourne's Ethiopian community. Gibson spoke at length about the ongoing plight of the Oromo people. Was Bell finally working to right her previous wrongs? My involvement in the Oromo community has been for the last four years, and it started through uh, volunteering and then I became deeply invested in uh, the community because I saw the character and the values of your people. And through the, the rights of the Oromo, I feel completely adopted by your nation and your people. And I feel like my heart is as invested as yours and your families. I see no difference in your struggle 
and the struggle that I have for fighting for the liberation of Oromo. In response, the president of the Australian Oromo Community Association stated that Bell was not a registered volunteer, was not a community member, and she was in no way working with the community. Another lie exposed. And just like that, Gibson would fade entirely from public view. A sad yet predictable fall to what had once been an iconic rise. These people who cried for you, have you thought about them? I know you sit here and tell me how you feel. Have you thought about how they're feeling at the moment? In the same way I just said, I put them in my shoes and I know that they're feeling the same way I feel. Well, some of them want you to go to jail. That's how they feel. I know that they feel that way. I've seen the emails. I've seen some of the comments. I'm on the receiving end of all of that, Tara. Belle Gibson was predatory in her behaviors, engaging more people and enlarging her deception over time. It wasn't just donors or charities that were hurt by the many frauds of Belle Gibson. Who knows how many seriously ill patients ditched what could have been life-saving measures only to follow a fraud to their early grave? What level of responsibility do companies like Apple, Penguin Press, L and others hold for pushing the lies of Gibson without once bothering to verify any of her lofty, dangerous claims. And I take responsibility for how this has unfolded. Do you take responsibility for driving any people away from conventional medicine in seeking treatment for their cancer? That would be really heartbreaking to me because I never intended on doing that. Do you accept that that's what you might have done? I accept that might have happened. It's impossible to know just how many lives were impacted. But what we do know is that her lies caused untold damage. Long after Bell Gibson is forgotten, and her acts little more than a footnote in the annals of sociopathic behavior, the ripples of her action will still be felt by the people she victimized. Then that was something that I had to come, with, come to terms with. That takes a lot. And it was really traumatizing. I was feeling a huge amount of grief and... Grief for not having cancer? No, that I had been lied to and um, that I felt like I had been taken for a ride. It took me a lot to unpack that. And once I was strong enough, I was ready to come out and speak with my community about it. And I had a definitive date. And that date was only 10 days before the media broke it. Okay. Thank you.